All right, so we are in the midst of what seems to be a developing story. I think we've got most of the pertinent facts. There was a terrible, just nightmarish sounding shooting in Washington. The uh, Congress was preparing for its charity baseball game uh, and the Republicans were preparing. <clears throat> and a guy named James Hodgkinson is alleged. He is the alleged shooter. He is now dead. Uh, he's 66. He's from Illinois. He is a guy, you know, when they go on his social media, he's a guy who spouts a lot of left wing rhetoric, kind of very, um, what would you say, kind of cliched left wing rhetoric. And uh, he took a, sh he opened up with a rifle and uh, shot Steve Scalise, uh, who is the uh, majority whip, the Republican whip. And fortunately, because Scalise is apparently fine, well, let's hear uh, Donald Trump. Uh, talking about it, uh, he made a statement today. Melania and I are grateful for their heroism and praying for the swift recovery of all victims. Congressman Scalise is a friend and a very good friend. He's a patriot and he's a fighter. He will recover from this assault. And Steve, I want you to know that you have the prayers not only of the entire city behind you, but of an entire nation and, frankly, the entire world. America is praying for you and America is praying for all of the victims of this terrible shooting. So Scalise, uh, the, the lucky thing was that because Scalise is in leadership, because he's the whip, he has a contingent of cops to protect him. And of course, the cops uh, and a, another guy with a gun, apparently, this I haven't quite got this information yet, uh, took the shooter down and they were wounded as well. And that's those are the heroes the president is talking about. Rand Paul described this thing being in a shooting situation where you are unarmed because of course washington dc has such a stringent anti-gun laws that you it's very very hard even to uh, get a, a carry permit for your home and they've had real problems uh, with the supreme court saying you know this is they've gone too far so nobody was armed so Rand paul describes congressman Rand paul describes what a nightmare it is to be in this situation without firearms our lives were saved by the Capitol Hill Police. Had they not been there, I think it would have been a massacre. And you are completely helpless. And, you know, having no self-defense and no way to get to somebody, the, the field was basically a killing field. I mean, if you were to run out there while the shooter was still shooting, he would have shot anybody. He was shooting people as far away as right field. So, I mean, he, uh, I think that, that's probably, what, 75 yards or so. And that's about where we were. I was lucky to be that far away. Way, but he's still shooting people 75 yards away uh, and there's no stopping and it, it appeared as if uh, after a while that he might have been advancing and had the Capitol Hill police not been there he could have walked around the field and just shot everybody your only chance would have been to run and so at, at some point we decided escape was really the only option and we did have a route of escape the people in the dugout had no route though because they're in a dugout that goes down a foot or two their only chance of survival is to get down below the, the, the surface surface of the ground and if they were to come and pop up they're only 20 yards from the shooter and so they really had no choice had the Capitol Hill police not been there to prevent the advance of the gunman I just I, you know as terrible as it is it could have been a lot worse uh, really, I mean, it just sounds absolutely horrific. Jeff Flake, uh, Congressman uh, Jeff Flake, apparently after the shooter was taken down rushed out of the dugout to uh, uh, to get to the wounded Scalise and stop the bleeding, or at least put some pressure on the bleeding, use his belt for a tourniquet. It was, it seems, a politically motivated crime. Now, that doesn't mean that the guy is a, some uh, great political philosopher. It means he's probably, most of these guys are deeply mentally ill. Most shooters are deeply mentally ill, but he, his mental illness was keyed off. His politics, uh, Congressman Ron DeSantis seemed to have had a meeting a confrontation, an encounter with the guy before the shooting took place. So here's DeSantis describing that. I actually left a little early, probably about a couple minutes before this all happened. And as I was getting into the car with one of my colleagues, Jeff Duncan, there was a guy that walked up to us that was asking whether it was Republicans or Democrats out there. And it was just a little odd. And then he kind of walked towards uh, the area where all this 
happened. So we've, we've told the police that. Was he carrying anything? <coughs> He was not carrying anything uh, at the time, um, but from where the shots were, I would think that that would have probably been staged because there was no one that was obviously walking around with a rifle um, at the time. But it was just a little odd that he kind right. of really you know, walked up to us to ask um, and then went ahead. And um, I, I probably, it was probably like three minutes, five minutes after we pulled out of the parking lot. Um, what time did you leave, Congressman? Because according to Brett Baer, uh, the shooting started this morning at 7.15, the gunman with a rifle. We, we left it up uh, probably no later than 710. So he just got out of there before the thing opened. I mean, the whole thing just sounds like a nightmare. Now, you, I know what you're wondering. Yesterday, I was talking about the Julius Caesar in Central Park, where Julius Caesar is d dressed up as Donald Trump. And every night, uh, courtesy of the funding from The New York Times and courtesy of funding from Time Warner, the owners of CNN, every night the audience stands up and cheers to the sight of Donald Trump being knifed to death. And you're wondering if I'm going to blame this shooting on them on, and am I going to blame it on Kathy Griffin for holding up the severed head of Donald Trump and all the people who have been talking about Donald Trump at the level of rhetoric that they've been talking about. And I'm not. And there's one very specific reason that I'm not going to do that. And the reason is I don't work for CNN and I don't work for the New York Times and I don't work for the ABC and I don't work for the left wing media that does this all the time that I mean, we only have to go back. I mean, you could go back to John F. Kennedy and the whole fact that that they covered up. They spent 20 years, 30 years, 40 years covering up the fact that Kennedy was a cold warrior killed by a communist. But let's not go back that far. Let's just go back to 2011 when Gabby Giffords, a congresswoman, was shot uh, in a terrible incident in Arizona. I want to start just reminding you, because it's not enough for me to talk about it. I want to play some of this stuff from that time. But first, I want to start by playing a friend. The shooter's name was Jared Loeffner, and he was, like all, like all these guys, a crackpot. And I hesitate to call him a schizophrenic, though that's technically what he had. And the only reason I hesitate to do that is most schizophrenics, it's a tormenting, terrible disease. Most schizophrenics are incredibly uh, are peaceful and never cause harm. So I don't want to demonize them. But it's some kind of people do this stuff almost always because they are mentally ill almost always. It's, it's because they're mentally ill, especially in America, where we're really not dealing, thank God, with the kinds of things that need to be stopped with a gun. But let's just play. Here is Jared Loeffner's uh, buddy who is talking about his motivation. This is cut two. He did not watch TV. He disliked the news. He didn't listen to political radio. He didn't take sides. He wasn't on the left. He wasn't on the right. Okay. And here is a montage from Reason TV of the incredible, incredible barrage of rhetoric against Sarah Palin and other right-wing commentators, other people who made comments that could be construed as violent. Sarah Palin had put a, a rifle sight over, uh, among other Gab others, Gabby Giffords, um, you know, uh, air area that her area that she was the congresswoman over saying we've got to target these areas and take them over and this was blamed the sheriff in arizona blamed sarah palin blamed other republican candidates and the news just ran with it here is a montage of selection party has treated this tragedy in a reprehensible way they claim their rhetoric has nothing to do with the shooting a lot of his political philosophy was anti-government he had picked up some of the extreme right uh, positions. I mean, it's sprinkled with things, anti-government. Seeing the government uh, as an enemy. What's been the role of talk radio in fueling the heated language? Wouldn't you be smiling too if you had the entire Democrat Party running interference for you? I try to inflame the public on a daily basis, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It does impact people who may have a mental problem. Palin, Beck, Sharon Engel, and the rest got their first target. Glenn Beck himself has been responsible for three thwarted assassination attempts this year. Did Glenn Beck, who obsesses nearly as strangely as this Mr. Loeffner did about gold and debt. The books you mentioned, there's a theme that runs through all of them, in particular the Ayn Rand book. Uh, the idea of the individual against the state. They uh, refuse to stop calling it a jobs killing, health care repeal. The right wing loves to, the go to rhetoric for them is wouldn't it be fun to kill the people we just. <sighs> yeah, so that was the the uh, left reacting to the shooting 
the, the non-political shooting by a madman of Gabby Giffords. And we are not going to do that because we're not them. But, but that in itself creates a problem. I just want to end this part before we say goodbye to Facebook and YouTube. I just want to end by talking about Ross Douthat's column this morning, which I bet he wishes he had back talking about Julius Caesar in the park. And Douthat is one of the House conservatives at the New York Times. And he wrote a column called The Trumpiest Roman of Them All. And it begins, the problem with staging a Julius Caesar, in which Caesar clearly resembles Donald Trump, the culture war controversy du jour, thanks to Shakespeare in the park, isn't that doing so encourages the president's assassination. So that's, we know that right there. No, the problem with the Trumpified Caesar is that the conceit fails to illuminate our moment the way a good classical illusion should. That's the problem with uh, putting that in the park, just so you know. So we're gonna continue talking about this because it really is, it really does create a very specific moral dilemma for us. Uh, but first I gotta say goodbye to Facebook and YouTube, but that means,